He is Hayes Carline, our Jaguars beat reporter here on 1010XL.com. And, of course, you could always read his work, his Jaguars blog, presented by Superior Fence and Rail on 1010XL.com. And you hear him every weekday afternoon on the Frangie Show. And, Hayes, we had OTAs recently. It's now mandatory minicamp. And one particular player made his return to the Jags today, that being Jalen Ramsey, who spoke today. Seemed like he was in pretty good spirits and seemed like he was, you know, was in good shape and seemed like he's just ready to go. He's ready to go. And uh, the uh, the tables have, have been elevated uh, <laughs> at TIAA Bank Field. I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, you got uh, it. Yeah, it's, um, it's a different vibe when number 20 is in the building. And... Uh, that's what we saw today. He looks in great physical shape. Uh, the coaches felt like that would be the case. They were very confident uh, that Jalen, the work he was doing with his dad, uh, you know, would would show up when he finally arrived after skipping the ten voluntary OTA sessions. And uh, did he looks in great shape? A little rusty on the field. He gave up uh, three completions. Uh, nothing overly, uh, you know, deep down the field, but still. Things that you don't normally see uh, Jalen Ramsey give up. So that was sort of interesting, but I wouldn't expect it'll take long for, for Jalen to knock the rust off. But yeah, he was very uh, enlightening as always, and uh, he's always a must-see uh, press conference. Yeah, and you figured that rust will be kicked off in a few days anyway and everything, and then he'll be ready to go for training camp for sure. Now, Doug Marone did speak today as well, and this is something you wrote about too that people can read on 1010XL.com was pretty high on Leonard Fournette thinking and expecting to see a lot of growth from the second year running back and potentially being that three down running back that we all thought he had the potential to be. Yeah, and that's the biggest real key in Leonard's development. We know about the running ability. He showed that last year as a rookie uh, going over 1,200 yards if you count the playoffs and and certainly uh, a number of touchdowns. Uh, I think he ended up with about 13. Uh, so we saw all that. And we saw his ability to catch the football, which was ahead of, I think, where most people thought it was, considering how little he did that at LSU. But every running back, for the most part, has to make the adjustment to pass protection uh, in the NFL. And some just never get there. Uh, It is really encouraging to hear Doug Marone. He was basically asked, you know, what do you want to see out of Leonard this year? And, uh, you know, he, he started with, the fact that they want to keep him on the field more on third down. It just it would it would help the offense in a number of ways, but it makes them harder to defend. Last year, Leonard would come out on obvious passing situations on third down. TJ Yeldon comes in and Yeldon's great in pass protection, but he's just not the dynamic running back that Leonard Fournette is. So it would really add something to the offense if Fournette could handle the pass protection. And Doug Marone, really for the first time, at least that I remember, really spoke highly about Fournette's pass protection ability and what he showed in the second half of last year and in the playoffs. So that's very encouraging and something that we'll certainly monitor uh, as the Jaguars get into training camp and then with those joint practices in Minnesota. All right, so just a couple more days of mandatory mini camp for this week, and then the Jags will go on their offseason again before coming back for training camp. With these next couple days, what are some of the other things you're going to be keeping an eye on? I think uh, Safari and Jenkins, Rashad Green, guys that had some momentum coming out of OTAs, does that continue? I I thought Didi Westbrook did some good things today. He's somebody that was quiet in OTAs, but today, uh, you know, flashed maybe more than he he ever did in OTAs. Uh, So that was encouraging. But I think that's what you're looking for. I mean, there's still no contact. So in terms of looking at the trenches, it's still tough to really make any sort of firm evaluations. So your eyes are still going to the perimeter, uh, going to Blake Bortles, the running backs. And, uh, you know, I I think what you'd like to see is you feel good about the receiving core one through six. You want to continue to see that. Uh, How much does Jalen affect that? Uh, A.J. Boye also missed about half the OTAs. Uh, He is obviously back now. So the degree of difficulty for this passing game has dramatically risen with Ramsey and AJ both now here. And I think it'll be interesting to see how much does that affect what we see out of Blake Bortles and the receivers. I don't think you should panic. And today I actually thought was was a pretty good day for the offense. If the, if the last two days go the way of the defense, I don't think that's any sort of alarming sign 
for Bortles in the passing game because they are going against one of the NFL's elite defenses right now. He is Hayes Carline. Again, you hear him every weekday afternoon on the Franchi Show here on 1010XL, and you can read his Jaguars blog presented by Superior Fence and Rail on 1010XL.com. Hayes, as always, thanks for the time. Thank you.